With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch up on all things Liverpool FC on a Tuesday on which the Premier League fixtures for the 24-25 season have been released. And in a move that will shock nobody, we begin the season away from home in a 12.30 kickoff against the newly promoted team. Liverpool will take on Ipswich Town in their first Premier League game. Now, as Simon Brundish pointed out, if you're going to get a 12.30 slot across the season, this is the best one to get because you're not overcoming anything. You're not coming back from another game. You're just going into this game ready to perform. It's a really interesting one because Ipswich obviously having secured back-to-back promotions under Kieran McKenna are likely going to be one of the favourites to go straight back down. But we do see very often these newly promoted teams, especially in their first home game, perform well above the expected standard. So, in August, we will play Ipswich away, Brentford Hall. So the first game at Anfield this season will be Brentford. And then Manchester United away. So we get the trip to Old Trafford out of the way nice and early. So that's a promising thing. <clears throat> but it's a difficult enough month given there's two away games there, newly promoted team and United. Three league games in September. Those will be Nottingham Forest at home, Bournemouth at home, and Wolves away. Now, that's a fairly straightforward month, you would expect. We should be winning all three of those. Molyneux is a tough place to go, but we should win that game. Bournemouth at home won't be easy, but we should win the game. And Forest have a lot of talent in the squad, but again, we should win the game. Into October. This is a tough month. Crystal Palace away. Chelsea home. Arsenal away. So that's a tough three games. There's an international break in October as well that we have to deal with. Palace obviously ended the season looking like the best team that had ever been put together. We'll see what they look like after the summer transfer window because the likes of Gwehi, the likes of Elise, the likes of Eze, and even Wharton could attract bids from top clubs. So maybe they don't look the same, but if they keep most or maybe all of that group together, they will be formidable this year. Obviously, Chelsea under a new manager like ourselves, but starting off at a much lower point. Um, it'll be tricky because they're a rival, but you'd expect us to beat them at home. And then Arsenal's a big 26, the weekend of the 26th, they'll probably be moved to the 27th. Arsenal away from home. 
in November, Brighton home, Aston Villa home, Southampton away, and Manchester City home. So that's a pretty tough month. But the, the three tough games, Brighton, and then obviously Villa and City are of a different level. They're all at home. So that's promising. And then in December, we go Newcastle away, which would be tough. Three days later, we play Everton away. Then it's Fulham home, Tottenham away. Our Boxing Day game is to be Leicester City at home. And then West Ham away. Not the easiest run in December. Six games, four of them away from home. And those four, Newcastle, Everton, Tottenham, West Ham. All tricky games. Our first game of the year 2025 will be Manchester United at home. Then we play Forest away, Brentford away, and Ipswich home. Now, that's a very good month for us. That should be four wins. Maybe you draw at Brentford, but we should be winning all four. Into February, it's Bournemouth at home. Wol- sorry, Bournemouth away. Wolves at home. City away. Newcastle home. That's that's tricky. The end of February is tricky. I believe there's another... There's a break in there, I think, for the FA Cup, as there's a break in January for the FA Cup. Um, City away and Newcastle home in a four-day span is difficult. March, we only play Southampton home and Villa away. April then, Everton home, Fulham away, West Ham home, Leicester away, Tottenham home. The two hardest games at the start and end of the month our three hardest games, or the three best opponents, I should say, are all at home. Everton, West Ham, and Spurs. And then into May, we go Chelsea away, which will be tough. Arsenal at home, which will be tough. Brighton away, that will be tough. And then Palace home. So it's a difficult end for the season. Our last five, Tottenham home, Chelsea away, Arsenal home, Brighton away, Palace home. Now, obviously, things can change if games get postponed and moved for whatever reason, but that's a tough run-in. That's a very tough run-in. We've got a pretty difficult start to the season in terms of our three games in August. We've got a tough end of the season in terms of the last game in April and the four games in May. We've got a difficult enough Christmas month, December. But we have some straightforward month. September looks straightforward. February looks straightforward. January, even with United, that's straightforward enough in my opinion. could be worse it could be better but it could be worse so much is going to come down to Saturday 12.30 kickoffs it just is it's the worst fixture you could have in the middle of the season and as we're all aware we get more of them than anyone else so fingers crossed we don't get too many this season Maybe with Jürgen gone, they don't pick on us that much. It, it seems to me, anyway, that part of it was because Jürgen complained about it so often, they were almost doing it to stick two fingers up to him. Arnie should embrace it. He should talk about how he loves a good 12.30 kickoff because he actually likes to get up at 4 a.m. That he's actually the rock in manager terms. And he likes to get up at 4 a.m., do his gym work, make those gains. And maybe then they'll just leave us alone and let us play at normal times or, you know, 5.30 kickoffs on Saturdays. Um, 
Right, what else do we have? Uh, Taylor Swift did not break all-time Anfield record as famed. So she said she was told that she'd broken the all-time attendance record for the stadium. Um, but it does not appear that she broke the all-time record, which is 61,905 which was for a 2-1 win over Wolves in the FA Cup back in 1952. Uh, it's not even the most this year, because 60,090 people watched our defeat to Crystal Palace. I hope they all enjoyed that one. Um, there was over 55,000 at the Taylor Swift concert. My guess is it was the largest crowd for a non-football event, so for a concert or anything like that. That is my guess. Um, but it was always unlikely to be lower than the capacity for the new stadium or even the old stadium, you know, pre, uh, pre-massive changes. Um, Liverpool interested in Mark Wehi, but huge price tag already set. Uh, so according to both the Telegraph and the Mail, we have interest in the Crystal Palace defender. Now, we've been linked with him for a couple of years. And I've always sort of just dismissed it because we like to sign centre backs who are six foot three and dominant in the air. And Mark Wehi is six foot flat and not dominant in the air. But he is a fantastic defender. Like, he is outrageously good on the floor. He's not dominant in the air, but he's not bad in the air. What he does really well is he seals off space and he uses his body really well to disrupt forward so they can't just jump over. He's very, very strong. He's quick, he reads the game well, he's a natural leader. Now, it may well be that Edwards and Co are still looking at the same kind of blueprint for what they want from a defender, which, given the links to Lenny Yarrow, would make a ton of sense. Yarrow is 6'3", he's dominant in the air, He, he is more like what we're used to where he is a different type of centre-back, but he is a very, very good defender. And it certainly wouldn't be against us signing him. He'll be 24 this summer. He's, I think, establishing himself as first choice for England. I think he's quite comfortably England's best centre-back. So I wouldn't be against the side. But I still have doubts. I do still have doubts. Still can't believe Chelsea sold him for 18 million. What a bunch of dumbass. Um, Liverpool close to completing seven-figure deal to sign Wolves under kit. So, uh, Alvin Amon, who's a 16-year-old centre-back, I believe. Or is he a centre midfielder? Yeah, he's a centre-back. He can also play in midfield. Um, I've never seen him play, so no idea. But last summer we went out, we got Trey uh, we got uh, Amara Nalo, both of whom turned out to be uh, very astute signing for us. We also did sign a youngster from Wolves, Liverpool signed. Well, yeah. yeah, Harvey Owen um, from Wolves last summer for 800 grand. And he's very highly regarded as well. So it does appear like one of the things that were pushing ahead with in this post-Brexit world is is signing the best 
young players we can get our hands on from other English clubs, even if we have to pay, you know, significant chunks of money for them. Um, Harvey Old was only 14 when we signed him last summer for 800 grand. Uh, this kid, um, Eamon, is 16 and will cost about a million and a half. The secret scout on Twitter who's seemingly very well connected in, in the world of youth football, uh, he's the one that said that we're kind of closing in on the deal. Uh, he was part of a senior wool squad that went and played Man City in May. So he was, if Wolves felt he was ready to bring in and they let him travel, he wasn't going to play, but similar enough to what we've done with young players in the past. Um, there is a clip here of him on off the Wolves Academy page and a decent technical ability. Yeah, I mean, look, it it can never do any harm to sign promising young players. I believe he's been at Bradford, is that correct? Yeah, he was at Bradford, came through Bradford's academy first, joined Wolves last summer, and now it looks like we are about to jump in and uh, and bring him on board. So that's promising for us for the long term. Uh, certainly, if he's if he's anything like Trainiani, who people absolutely rave about, that's exciting. Right, the eight most unbelievable stats produced under Jurg Klopp. Uh, Between February 2019 and July 2020, Liverpool won 24 consecutive league games at Anfield. The longest ever home winning run in English top flight history. We've lost only two of our last 114 league matches at Anfield in front of fans. Obviously, we had that horrendous run when the stadium was empty. Liverpool went unbeaten at home in front of fans from January 21st, 2017 until October 29th, 2022. 84 games. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressed. Liverpool managed to go four whole Premier League seasons unbeat across Klopp's first F, Klopp's four league campaigns. Um, that's pretty impressive. That's it. I think that's meant to say eight complete campaigns. To be quite honest, I think that's a mistake. Um, 103 points from 105 available. That was the run from March the 10th, 2019 until February 24th, 2020. 34 games and one draw from 30, 34 wins and one draw from 35 games. It's the most dominant any team has ever been in the Premier League. Uh, cloppage time is obviously our um, ability to score after the ninth minute mark. 18 winning goals after the 90th minute mark. In Fergie time, across Alex Ferguson's entire 21 years of Premier League football, United only managed 16. That's pretty impressive. Uh, So Jürgen had a win percentage of 60.9%, which is obviously better than Bill Shankly, but also better than Bob Pace. Uh, Kenny Dalglish was 60.91. Uh, I believe is that's the only person who's ahead of him. Uh, comeback Kings. Liverpool won 154 points from losing positions under Jurgen Klopp. And Liverpool travelled to 25 different countries with Jurgen Klopp as manager. So that'll be not only European competition, but also, I assume... Uh, pre-season games and such. That's all very good. Uh, what else do we have then? Let's check out out of field watch. Liverpool.com is still on my shit list. 
Uh, so there we go. Former Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp inviting fans for beer and football in Bjorka. Jurgen's having just a great old time, isn't he? He absolutely is living his best life and good for him. Um, there is a piece about the Wolves youngster. There is a piece about Mark Wehi. There is a piece about uh, the fixtures and how tough the run it is. Piece about Luis Suarez talking about Darwin. Uh, he's about Virgil former Premier League manager reveals why Trent Alexander-Arnold shouldn't start for England oh I can't wait to see what insight is is in this piece Uh, Alan Pardew yeah Alan Pardew says Trent shouldn't start after his Glaring error against Serbia. Glaring error. He miscontrolled the football. This is the same Alan Pardew who everybody remembers he signed that big stupid contract when he was at Newcastle. Uh, I believe it was an eight year contract. I wonder was Todd Bowley advised at that point. It wasn't long after that that sackpardew.com appeared and thousands of flyers were being handed out. Um, so he joins Crystal Palace in January 2015, having signed that eight-year contract at Newcastle and a year later they just wanted him gone. He lasts at Palace and... Uh, nearly two years 87 games so that brings us to 2016 December 2016 so seven and a half years in the seven and a half years since now bear in mind Alan Pardew began his management career at Reading in 1999 Managed them for 211 games. Then went to West Ham in October 2003. Managed them for 163 games. And then went to Charlton. Managed them for 90 games. And then went to Southampton. And managed them for 64 games. And then went to Newcastle. And had 185 games in charge there. And then has 87 games in charge of Crystal Palace. So he's managed a lot of football. And in December 2016, Alan Pardew, if my maths is correct, was 55 years of age. So you would say in his managerial peak, since then, Alan Pardew has managed 21 games at West Brom, winning three of them and getting sacked with a 14.3% win rate. Then he managed ADO dead high in the Netherlands. For eight games, he won one of them at 12.5% win rate, if you don't mind, and was sacked. And then he managed CSKA Moscow for seven games, won one of them, 14.3%, if you don't mind, and was sacked. So then he gets the job with Aris in Greece, and he manages 22 games, winning nine, and gets sacked. Now that's a 40.9% win rate which is just exactly the same as his career win rate. But we're talking about a man that in the last seven and a half years has managed 58 games. 58 games with 14 wins in seven and a half years. So about a season's worth of games for a Jurgen Klopp or a Pep Guardiola, a top manager with a top team. And uh, he's won 40. Alan Pardew needs to shut the fuck up. He is no longer relevant. Nobody wants to hear him. The thing he's most notable for, well, actually, the two things he's most notable for are the silly dance in the FA Cup final when they lost 
which was an embarrassment. The silly dance was an embarrassment. And he's known for headbutting uh, Jacob Myler. He was manager of Newcastle. They're playing Hull, and he threw a headbutt because he's a prick. And the stories of Alan Cardew being a prick are widely known. He he's just not a very nice man. There's stories about him. He was basically, he, he was a manager of whatever team it was, and they were, uh, they were away off pre season or whatever. Here we go. I'll, I'll, re- I'll read you the story. So there's a story about Alan Pardew that you probably know, but it's absolutely worth recount- recounting if you weren't aware of it, and indeed if you are. Hale comes from Pardew's West Ham day, told by former club photographer Steve Bacon, who claimed that one of one day the coaching staff were sitting down for dinner when their food arrived. Story goes that Pardew took one look at the fitness coach Tony Strudwick's dinner, decided it looked better than his choice, and he just took it off him. In response to protests from everyone present, Pardew responded, When you're the king, you can do anything. What a prick. Why is anyone giving him airtime? An absolute bell end. Anyway, we've got sidetracked hating on Alan Parage. Dreadful set of lads. An absolutely dreadful set of lads. Uh, moving on to AnfieldIndex.com. There is a piece about Dominic. There is a piece about Cody and Virgil. There is a piece on our fixtures, a piece on Chris, uh, Crescencio Somerville, who looks like he might well go to Brighton, which is a good move for him. It's about the level he needs to move to. There's a piece, piece about Kavicha Kvalachkelia, who, if we can sell Diaz, we should absolutely go for him. We should be pushing Diaz out the door actively and going for Picha. Uh And then podcast-wise, there is Monday lunchtime, which was out yesterday. There is the daily Euro 2024 pod. Now, if you're not an Anfield Index subscriber, you're not a, a member of Pro, uh, you can get that over on the EPL feed, or you can get it without ads on Anfield Index Pro. So do sign up like a good gang of lads, and Lassies obviously as well. Uh, and there is the latest minefield, and once again, if you haven't listened to that, please, please, please go and listen to it. The lads are just brilliant. And the more you listen, the more we can bully them into doing more podcasts. So that's it from me today. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care of yourselves and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You will regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network. This podcast is sponsored by IQ Bar. I've got good news and bad news. Here's the bad news. Most protein bars are packed with sugar and unpronounceable ingredients. The good news? There's a better option. I'm Will, and I created IQ Bar Plant Protein Bars to empower doers like you with clean, delicious, low-sugar brain and body fuel. IQ Bars are packed with 12 grams of protein, brain nutrients like magnesium and lion's mane, and zero weird stuff. And right now, you can get 20% off all IQ Bar products, plus free shipping. 
Try our delicious IQ Bar Sampler Pack with seven plant protein bars, four hydration mixes, and four enhanced coffee sticks. Clean ingredients, amazing taste, and you'll love how you feel. Refuel smarter, hydrate harder, caffeinate larger with IQ Bar. Go to eatiqbar.com and enter code BAR20 to get 20% off all IQ Bar products plus free shipping. Again, go to eatiqbar.com and enter code BAR20.